This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Conspicuously every man, with distinctly American manner, beliefs, and ideas, though with overtly more courage and purpose and dedication than most of his compatriots. He is one of us, accessible and comprehensible. In more vivid colors, his life overlaid with drama, consequence, and daring. That is often the point of art, or at least entertainment, presenting a portrait of an individual, fundamentally no different from anyone in the audience in appearance, ability, and personality, an ordinary person who rises when the occasion demands it and performs heroically. Cops are frequently employed as the character in these scenarios, because cops are viewed as basically ordinary guys. In movies, though less in books, male cops are the chosen gender, facing extraordinary circumstances. Consider Bruce Willis in Die Hard, Al Pacino in Serpico, Steve McQueen in Bullet, Clint Eastwood in Dirty Harry, Danny Glover in Lethal Weapon, Mel Gibson's The Crazy One, or, to shift to TV, anybody from Law and Order or NYPD Blue or Homicide, Life on the Streets or The Wire or any one of a thousand other shows. Sheriff Joe is a larger-than-life character wrapped in flesh and blood. You'll appreciate that even more after you listen to his book and come to know more about his career, his life, and his principles. You don't have to agree with everything he does to be drawn in and appreciate his appeal as an elected official and as a man. I'm a true blue Democrat and disagree with the sheriff on a number of issues, large and small, domestic and foreign. Regardless, none of that matters to me in this instance, because I've learned, as we all should have, that honor and honesty and intellect and conviction count for more than any policy or plan. Whether we're talking about how a school board decides to educate our children or how the president chooses to protect the environment, promote energy independence, provide health care, and conduct war. From citizen to government, our disinterest in adequately funding public schools has left Arizona ranked at the bottom in national education ratings, and the Bush administration's dishonest and dishonorable behavior has had ruinous consequences at home and abroad. With that in mind, we can appreciate that the sheriff is a person to be respected and admired. In a world so difficult and dangerous, in a time so uncertain and confusing, that is saying quite a lot. This is the second time I've written a book with the sheriff, the previous effort entitled America's Toughest Sheriff. The first time we collaborated, Sheriff Joe had only been in office a couple of years and was just beginning to gain national attention, so it was imperative in that earlier book to review in detail each of the sheriff's programs. Such a comprehensive methodology is no longer necessary, as word of these programs has spread far and wide. Instead, this book takes a different approach, more personality than programs, more commentary than statistics, more passion than recitation. This book is also about issues, national issues that will determine not only what sort of country this is and will be, but also what sort of people we are and what sort of people we want to be. Sheriff Joe's constitutional authority is only that of a sheriff, responsible for the jails and law enforcement in Maricopa County, Arizona. That's it. But his personal authority, earned by dint of everything he has done, everything he has stood for, extends far beyond the county line. His is a voice unique on the American scene. His is a voice worth hearing. I hope you enjoy the book. Lynn Sherman Joe's Law Chapter 1 The Bottom Line I drove over to the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, MCSO, Training Center, located on the west side of town. It's a huge facility, necessary to accommodate our needs. I walked up to the second floor and down the hallway, past classrooms teaching new recruits the fine points of being a law enforcement officer, a Maricopa County Deputy Sheriff or Detention Officer. Other classrooms were filled with not only deputies and detention officers, but also cops from other departments, all going over changes and advances in every related aspect of serving and protecting. Other young men and women dressed in shorts and t-shirts, in between exercise modules or self-defense classes, hurried through the halls, flattening themselves against the walls whenever a superior officer strode by. Lisa Allen, my longtime immensely capable and absolutely essential director of public information, led the way. 
She had arranged what was about to happen. For once, I was just along for the ride. I walked into the large room we used for meetings.